they're civil 3D objects with components. That they are similar in that way, uh, and the alignments actually can be brought directly from Casey or built from elements within civil 3D. The surfaces must be built within civil 3D, and in order to use these objects, the surface objects and the alignment objects for 3D modeling, they have to be built in Civil 3D because, <clears throat> because of their format. Bringing MicroStation DGN files of the Align RD01 or the Surface tens from MicroStation just don't work well. So it's important to build, to understand what a surface an alignment object is within Civil 3D and uh, build it appropriately. Now, what you see on the screen is a typical Casey project. This is, this is just a test project and in it are some points and brake lines and survey chains and an alignment. You'll see the alignment uh, starting down here at the uh, southeast corner and moving along up through the project. In order to get the alignment into Civil 3D, you'll want to go to your geometry, geometry chains, and down to edit horizontal alignment right here. You'll want to load your alignment. You can snap to it or you can load it from the database like this and say OK. And you'll, you'll need to hit the load button if you do. So the alignment properties will be in the data box and then just save input right here. So you save the input and I'm just going to copy over a previous one. This is a baseline one alignment and say OK. And I've overwritten that particular file. To get the XML from Casey, of course, you go to the FDOT 2010 or FDOT SS2 macros and export the survey data to land XML 1.2 and save the file. <clears throat> so first we'll look at surfaces. I'm going to go to the FDOT pad uh, label right here within the, the ribbon and create a file. You'll see under the project I have civil 3D projects. I have the project set. The discipline is roadway and the file group are survey design files. In this case I'm going to build a survey development model for building my surfaces and alignments and later I can move them into deliverables. So I'm going to create this file and open it. And I can close the create file dialog box. There are a couple of ways to set the projections. It's always important to do it. You can go to the settings and right click, say edit drawing settings. Uh, you can go through the datum and choose it or if you know it you can just simply type in the projection. In this case, I'll type in Florida 83, North Florida, and it'll set the projection. And you, of course, then you want to save. You can save at the little disk icon. Once I've created the, the survey 01.dwg, I can create a surface. And it's important to use this template because each template is specific to the product that you're trying to use. And this template has the point, point styles, label styles in it, the description keys. It also has the maximum triangle sizes set. The weeding factors and the supplemental factors are also set up within the template. And that's not true with all templates. So this template is specifically built for building surfaces and importing alignments. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the prospector and create a surface. In this case, it's going to be, I'm going to use uh, a different layer. So I'll change the layer to DTM triangles. Say OK. It's going to be a tin surface. I'm going to give it a name. In this case, uh, I'll give it existing ground. Each style, uh, each uh, surface can get a style. That style can be changed here or it can be changed at any time from the surface itself. In this case, I have triangles, but I could set it to contours or I could set it to no display. So I'm going to leave it at triangles and say OK. So now I have a surface created. If we look at it, we'll see what's within that surface. It has mass, watersheds, and definitions. And when that, within the definitions, we're going to be concerned with point groups, bringing in our ground point groups for, contour, for uh, building triangles, and we're going to concentrate on our ground break lines. To bring the ground point groups in, I'm going to go to my survey tab, and this is an existing survey database. I have one already grouped, and I'll say open for edit. I'll go down to the survey point groups, and I am going to find the ground points which are under the GDTM RD group that was pre-grouped by the XML grouper and I'll right click and I'll insert them into the drawing. And it's important to understand that with surfaces they are very dynamic and get created on the fly and they get updated on the fly. So how you visualize your point groups and how you have your layers set on and off will affect the surface. And in this case, I have some points in this set of ground points that don't belong. I have a monument that was added, inadvertently added to the ground point, and I have a couple of cross section points that should not be in the surface because these are check section points. You don't want to include your check section points into the surface, or your check sections will fit perfectly. So these are for checking the surface, not for creating the surface. I'll show you how to remove those points from the surface. Once we have the points inserted into the surface, we want to go up to our prospector, and we want to update our point groups. You'll see, um, see the GDTMRD points are in the point groups, and they are with GTMRD and then the no display point group and then the all points point group. And of course the hierarchy of these points are how they displayed. So if I go down to surfaces and go to point groups, I can add a point group. And you see the list is the same. I'm going to choose the point, say OK, and the surface is created on the fly. And notice the way it is triangulated, the road itself, you don't see it included in the okay. surface at this time. To remove the points, I'll select the surface itself. And once selected, you'll see that a contextual ribbon opens up, in this case for the 10 surface existing ground. I can add labels, I can do inquiries, uh, I have general tools, I can modify, I can analyze, and I have surface tools, and of course the launch pad for creating profiles and data shortcuts. Now under the modify, we can edit the surface, and if I want to delete a point, I hit this, but because those points have not been turned on within the surface, you'll get an error. It'll say you must have surface points displayed for this operation edit the surface style and try again. And what it's telling you is there are components to every surface. So if you'll right, you can right click or you can go up to contextual ribbon 
and choose Edit Surface Styles. And what you'll see are uh, under the Display tab, so you have information, borders, contours, you have all kinds of components. You'll see the component types under the Display tab, and they have points turned off. So if I turn the points on and say OK, when you look at the points down here, you'll see uh, an icon for the point itself come up. It's a little plus symbol. And then I'll be able to edit and or delete those points. I can edit the surface or delete it. So what I'm going to do is select the surface. And I'm going to go up here and edit the surface and say delete points. And I'll delete this monument, this cross section point here. And I can get this cross section point here. And hitting enter to execute, as you can see, we remove those points from the surface. Now I want to add break lines from the survey database. Uh, I'm going to turn the points off first that I want them to display. And then I'm going to go to the survey tab and close the point groups. I'm going to go to figure groups and I'll find the ground chains that are under the GTTMRD chains. And I'm going to right click and say create break lines. Now all of these break lines, the building break line, the center line of pavement, the edge of pavement, and the shoulders to the road are going to be included. And I'll say OK. The break line dialog box will come up and I'll say I'll call them brown break lines they're going to be a type is going to be standard and I'm going to turn on the weeding factors and the supplemental factors the distance in the supplemental factor represents that a triangle vertex will be created along a break line every 50 feet and the middle ordinate of one tenth is standard is pretty much standard across all the platforms that build DTMs for your curves and it'll create uh, an acceptable tri a number of triangles along the curve say OK you'll see the break lines get cre created or get uh, inserted into the surface if you want to view the surface, you can right click and use the object viewer. And this is really the most efficient way to look at it. Otherwise, it can slow down civil 3D significantly. But you can see after I added, added the roadway brake lines, it really triangulated nicely along the road. Pressing the escape will close the object viewer. Because the way it is visualized and adding and subtracting points will affect the surface, it's, it's important to go ahead and export the surface as an XML so it can be brought into a GTM RD file at a later time. So what I'll do is I'll go up to the prospector and I'll go to my existing ground surface and I'll right click on it. And down here you'll see export land XML. I can just take the default which has surfaces and existing ground surface checked. All the others are not checked. Say OK and it'll ask for the name for the surface XML. So I'm going to call this ground DTM 01 XML. I can also create additional surfaces. In this case, I'll create a bridge surface. It's going to be a 10 surface. The layer is going to be DTM triangles. 
the surface itself, I'll name bridge. And the style will be triangles. Right? Right here. Okay. And as in the original ground surface, I'll go down to the survey tab, go into point groups, and I'll right click and add the bridge points. I'll insert them into drawing right here. So you'll see some bridge points got added, but they didn't automatically get put into the surface. They are actually filtered by zone four for superstructures and aerial structures and bridges. Okay. If I go to my prospector, I can update the point groups. It will show the bridge DTM points along with the ground points. I can go to my surface. You see it already affected the existing ground. In this case, it didn't make any changes, but it is important to go ahead and rebuild any um, update that's needed. I'll go to the bridge, to definitions, and I'm going to insert the point groups for the bridge DTM points. Say OK. You'll see it has triangulated, but because I have my maximum triangle length set to 100, it's going to go no further than across from the bridge. So now I will need to go to my survey tab, go to the bridge chains, and create break lines. And I want to, I want to include all the zone four break lines in this case, which are the bridge elements. So I, I'll turn them all on. I'll make sure that it is affecting just the bridge surface. Say OK. I'll call this bridge break lines. They'll be standard. I'll include the winning factors and the supplemental factors. Say OK. And you'll see that the bridge has been also triangulated. If I look at my object viewer, I select both and look at my object viewer, you can see I have a bridge and a surface. To export the bridge XML, I'll go up to Bridge, and I will right click and export Land XML, and accept the defaults. And in this case, I'll name it Bridge DTM. 01 XML. Hit save. At this point, I can create deliverables from the create file dialog box. At the very top, the digital terrain model will create the GDTMRD01 file. I'll create it. Say open. And I'll also create the GTTM R2 while I'm at it. And I'll say create file, but I'm not going to open that one. So I am in the GTTM RD file. I need to set the projection. As, in, as before, I could go to settings and right click and set settings that way. Or I can type set FL for Florida. N O R T H for north. Set Florida north into the command line, and it will it will change the coordinate system. Say yes, and make sure to save the file. From here, I go to the Insert tab, and I want to insert a land XML. I'm going to insert the GDTM RD. For ground and say OK. In this case, this ground DTM XML that I just created, say OK. 
I can just accept we're not going to put in alignments or parcels. So all I have to do is say accept, OK. And you'll see this same exact surface is saved. And it will not be affected by changes in the visualization within the survey development model. If I save it, I can check compliancy by doing quick check. And I get 100% compliant. I can also open, I go to projects or survey, the O2 file. Again, I'll set the projection. save it, go to insert tab, insert the bridge DTM, XML file, OK, accept the defaults, and in this file I have the just the bridge deck, say save, and if I check compliancy, again it's 100% compliant. So from here, I'm going to move on to surfaces. I close the UTMRD02 and the 01 file. I'm going to go back to the survey development model. In this case, I'm going to go to the surfaces, and I'm going to turn off the visualization of these surfaces. So if I right-click and go to Surface Properties, Instead of using surface style as a tri as a uh, or triangles as a surface style, I'll use no display. And say OK. It'll turn off the bridge deck. I can go to the existing ground, surface properties, change the style of no display. Say OK. Now, if you remember early in the webinar. I create an alignment come out of Casey. So one of the, what I want to do is show you how to bring that alignment into Casey or into Civil 3D from Casey and show you some of the components of that alignment. So if I go to the Home tab, as long as you have this toolbox checked, the toolbox tab will be down here in your in your tool space. So if I look under miscellaneous utilities and go to corridors and then tr Casey translator, I'll find import Casey alignments. All I have to do is right click and say execute. And I am at the Casey directory where I saved the baseline one HA number file. And I will say open. The alignment from Casey file dialog box will open up. The name of the alignment is BL1. I'll keep that the same. It's going to be a center line alignment. I'll give it a description. Baseline survey. <clears throat> you don't need to enter a site. The alignments have styles, and within those styles are components. So I'll choose FDOT existing alignment. The alignment layer that it's going to come on, I'm going to change to baseline survey in this case. And the alignment label set, I'll choose full station 100 foot with minor of 20 feet. Note that the starting station 10 plus 0, 0 right here is already set and will set because it read it from the Casey HLA number file. Say OK. You'll see if you zoom up that the alignment is inserted to it. I'll, I'll change the uh, scale and 
you can see the alignment. If you select the alignment, contextual ribbon comes up again for baseline BL1 alignment. You've got labels and styles, general tools. You can modify the alignment. You can analyze the alignment. And again, you have launch pad uh, or other functionality. If I right click on this, you also have choices within the box that opens up. And I'm going to look at uh, the alignment properties just to show you what they look like. You can change the object style at this point. You have station controls, points, of intersection. So there are components to an alignment that are important to understand. I can say it's gay. And as with surfaces, at this point, when I'm satisfied with my alignment, I can export the alignment as an XML. So I go up to my prospector, I'll close surfaces and go to alignments. Here's the center line alignment. And this is my baseline one alignment. I'll right click on it, and again, I have the choice of exporting to a land XML file. I'll do that. I'll accept the defaults. And I specifically want to make sure that it is a 1.2 Land XML schema. Say OK. And I will call this VL1 align, alignment. Say save. There's another way you can bring alignments in, or there's other ways to bring alignments in. You can bring them in to Civil 3D and make objects. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the FDOT ribbon, and I'm going to create a file. And I'm going to create an alignment file. So in this case, you're not going to find the alignment file within the survey design files. You're actually going to find it under roadway design files. It'll be the very top choice, and it uses the align RD template down here. If I say create file, it's going to create the O1 file, and I'll open it and close the dialog box. Again, I'm going to set my projection and save. I previously had a an align I align zero one an align RD01 file from a microstation uh, Bentley project and had deliverables already built. So what I did was I simply just went to uh, open the microstation line file and just saved it as a DWG. Now this is not going to work because the template that was creates it is an open template that doesn't have everything you want in that align file. So what we want to do is we want I want to X reference that converted DWG into an alignment into this alignment file as a reference file and then create the alignment from the objects within that reference file. So I'm going to say xref and I'm going to attach and in this case this is an align RD01 file from a microstation project. I'm going to just attach it and I'll attach it as an overlay and say OK. I'm going to zoom to extents. Okay, so I've got my alignment, my my XREF within the survey development model. It's a simple product procedure to go to the home tab uh, into uh, and go to alignments. And go create alignment from objects. 
So you have to select each one. And we have to select it by XREF. And it's going to say select the first line or arc in the XREF. So once you've selected it, you, I've noticed you have to select one, and then you select the curve, and then you sec, select the next one. And we have three total, and I'm going to hit enter. It's going to give me the option of reversing the alignment when I bring it in. If I needed to go the other direction, I'd say reverse. Hit the enter button. It will bring up the create alignment from objects tool. And give it a name. I'll call this one, I'll, I'll call this one BL2. It's a center line alignment. The description. Baseline survey. In this case, I don't have a starting station, so I'll have to add it manually. I want to set to FDOT existing. Change it to baseline survey. Set OK. Alignment label set. I'm going to keep at 100. I'll set that at full station 120. I don't need to add convert curves between it because they should match up. Say OK. And I'll remove the X ref. Detach it. and the alignments in the file. As you can see as BL2, in this case, at this point, I can export it to a land XML and bring it to an alignment file. So I'll call it BL2 line. Say save. And I want to save this file and open up the align RD file. And in the insert tab, I'm going to insert a land XML. And you can see I've got the bridge and the ground alignments, and I have the alignments I just saved. So bridge and ground surfaces. And then these are the alignments. And say import land XML. OK and I have a alignment, an align RD file that is compliant, can be used for design. So I have to hit save, I'll hit FDOT, quick check, and it's 100%. So this is what an alignment is. It has components. You can, com you can edit the styles. You have markers, displays, summaries, and the components. Uh, you also can edit the labels and change them. In case if I don't if I don't want them at 20, I could change them to 50, for instance. Say five zero, and say OK, and it would change them the tick marks to 50 foot stations. So uh, this concludes my webinar on surfaces and alignments.